Right all out of all PLCA message transmitted. I'm getting a good zero one. Program select switch enable. Flight select switch all. Check. Launcher select switch all. Check. Enable switch enable. Enable. Key turn at commit time. Three, two, one, key turn. This has been a test launch of a Minuteman 3 missile at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. It's headed for a target island in the South Pacific. Vandenberg is the launch site for all test launches and the training center for students in both the Minuteman and Titan weapon systems. Students undergo three months of extensive training to become proficient in their respective weapon system. I'm Captain Chuck Boyer, weapon system instructor in the Minuteman Modernized Command Data Buffer Weapon System. And these are my students. They are participating in a mission-ready initial qualification training program, whereby we train the student from his initial entry into the missile weapon system to an actual combat alert status. When he has completed this training program, he will be combat ready and able to perform alert duties in an operational launch control center. One such operational base is F.E. Warren Air Force Base, whose 20 launch control facilities are located on the plains of Wyoming and Nebraska. These facilities are manned 24 hours a day by a two-man operational launch crew. I'm Captain Mike Rice, combat crew commander in the Minuteman 3 weapon system. The demands are great upon the combat crew and the hours are long. The responsibility is vast and for this reason we're carefully screened prior to being chosen as a combat crew member and are monitored constantly to maintain this peak efficiency. The job's a tough one, and we couldn't do it without the help of the support teams both here at the launch control facility and at the support base. Above ground, there's a cook who makes all our meals, maintenance teams, and a security police team. Now, the security police team has charge of security both at the launch control facility and the 10 remote unmanned launch facilities. Now, should a security violation occur at one of these launch facilities, we immediately dispatch this security police team. They investigate the problem and secure the site. Go back to Go back in control. We advise initiating area and fence line check. A security violation may be anything as small as a jackrabbit or tumbleweed being detected by one of our security sensors to one, someone actually attempting access to one of the sites. Quick response by our security police team is necessary to maintain security at that site. Our maintenance teams are responsible for the operational readiness of all our missiles. When we detect a fault in one of these missiles, we phone job control and they dispatch a maintenance team from the support base. Because the launch sites are spread over a wide area, we may have to travel for an hour or more just to get there. We know when we go out what the problem basically is. That way we can send the right people and the right equipment to fix it. We'll take just as long as we have to to make sure the missile is fixed right and back online. The operation of this weapon system is a team effort. The whole mission depends upon everyone doing their job. sophisticated giant jets of today owe their origins to two bicycle makers from Dayton, Ohio. They modified a man-carrying kite with a water-cooled engine of their own design and two chain-driven pusher propellers. On December 17, 1903, Orville Wright won the toss of a coin from his brother Wilbur to become the first person in history to fly under sustained mechanical power. That first flight lasted only 12 seconds and went just 120 feet. The entire flight could have taken place inside the cargo compartment of a present-day C-5. Despite the enormous potential of the Wright brothers' first success, they could find no one interested enough to buy their invention. It wasn't until 1908 that the War Department asked for a machine to carry two persons a distance of 125 miles at an average speed of 40 miles per hour. The Wright brothers won the bid, and the Air Force was born. The realization of man's age-old dream of flying there was a major debt to Orville and Wilbur Wright.
something that looks aren't everything, the A-10 flies, handles, survives, and looks like no other aircraft. In its own easygoing but dangerously effective way, the A-10 is breaking new ground in the annals of aviation history. the crew chief dream. A good airplane to work on. It's uh, easy to get to. The uh, service and whatnot is a lot easier than on most aircraft. For one thing, the aircraft built up off the ground. You don't have to crawl around in your knees on your belly to perform maintenance on it. The A-10 is designed specifically for defeating any enemy ground threat. It carries up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance, both conventional and laser-guided, as well as the Maverick electro-optical missile system. But most importantly, the A-10 carries the gun, the Gao 830mm Gatling gun, capable of 4,200 rounds per minute. The 30mm Gao 8 cannon is really the heart of the A-10 system. The A-8 airplane is pretty much built around the cannon. The Gao 8 gun, which... Uh, been compared to the size of a Volkswagen, gives the pilot a certain added amount of confidence. probably the simplest airplane to fly. There's a common misconception that speed is the only answer to survivability in a high threat environment. We found that it's not your speed, it's maneuverability. The A-10 wasn't designed specifically for, for speed, although it does redline at 450 knots. the job it's supposed to do, there's no other airplane in the Air Force inventory that will do it. And that's the job of close air support, as well as the A-10 does it. If we can see it, we can destroy it in the A-10. It's a tremendous feeling to fire the Gao 8 cannon. Uh, 16,000 pounds of recoil every time we squeeze the trigger. You could say it uh, stays on target longer, it does it in closer, and it carries a bigger payload. The San Antonio chapter of the Red River Valley Fighter Pilots Association had a surplus of funds they'd accumulated from the sale of POW bracelets during the Vietnam conflict. They all agreed to use the money to build a lasting memorial to all Americans who gave their lives in Southeast Asia combat. At Randolph Air Force Base, the association made the official presentation of this memorial to the United States Air Force. Special guests included Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater and Lieutenant Colonel Donald Rigg, president of the local chapter. This is indeed a great day for the Red River Valley fighter pilots. I recall another great day in 1973 when some of our comrades and their sons and husbands and fathers were released from prison in Southeast Asia. But many did not return. And this monument is dedicated to them, to those thousands of Americans that did not return from that conflict. Now, I can't tell you how difficult it was to create a monument that would adequately symbolize the contributions of these men. There is no material from which you could recreate courage, devotion, love of country, and a family, and a fellow man. That comes from the souls of men. It's unique to each of us. But realizing all of this, we're very proud of this representation of the missing man formation. I believe it comes as close as we mortals can in expressing our appreciation and pride for their accomplishments and our loss in their absence. very, very powerful.
powerful symbol of the commitment, the dedication, and the ultimate sacrifice made by many of our comrades in arms. This monument stands here as a memorial to nearly 47,000 American men and women, our fellow Americans who did not return. I won't attempt to describe the feelings that are symbolized by that empty space between the lead aircraft and his wingmen on the memorial. There are no words that can accurately describe the professional sentiments or the personal emotion involved with the loss of our comrades in arms. If we had the power of miracles, I believe all of us would bring those comrades back and fill that empty slot. But we don't have that power. So we must do our very best to keep their memories alive and close. I can assure you we will not forget.